Okay, hi everybody. So today is our 10th recitation. So we're gonna go over the TLB and other space management. Uh, as usual, we're gonna just like review what we covered last week. So last week we've covered the physical mem memory management and we've said that in order for you, the first step for implementing the physical memory management is to define your core map. And core map is basically a data structure that keeps a track of the physical uh, pages information. <coughs> we've also went through when should we initialize uh, the core map, and we've said that the best place to initialize it is before the very first KML call. We've went through all the bootstraps functions in main.c, and, main and uh, we know that the first KML call is located in proc bootstrap, so you need to initialize your call map before that. And after the RAM bootstrap, um, since uh, core map is required for the KML, then uh, allocating a memory for your core map is, should be done manually. It shouldn't, uh, so you cannot use KML for it. So you should end up with uh, such a physical memory where you don't have leaked memory. Uh, you have the exception handler first, uh, that comes first, and then the kernel. Once uh, we reach the RAM bootstrap, we, ha we have two, uh, these two regions uh, in the physical memory. Then we need to initialize our core map uh, the way uh, we've presented. So uh, previously, uh, some people used to just like use uh, the dump VM way, just like or uh, postpone the core map initialization into the VM bootstrap, and that's too late, which means from the time that uh, you start the RAM bootstrap to the point where you call the VM bootstrap, you're gonna leak memory because kmalloc gonna call allocate pages, allocate pages gonna call the RAM steal memory, uh, which leaks memory, and there is no way for you to retrieve such a memory in between the kernel and core map that's gonna be allocated. So the best way to uh, initialize the core map, as we said, is before the very first kmalloc call. We've also presented uh, the core map uh, structure, and we said that the core map basically should have entries equal to the number of pages that you have in the physical memory. Uh, so this, for example, this is how it should map. Uh, so for example, the first two entry, three entries, let's say, uh, should be reserved for the exception handler kernel and core map, and the remaining should be the free memory that the user can use. So um, we've also mentioned that, um, so yeah, so the compute the number of physical pages in memory, uh, and you need to note that the number of uh, physical pages in memory, it is fixed, but it is, not known at the compile time, it uh, should be retrieved, or the RAM size should be retrieved at the runtime, and uh, that means you need to initialize your core map later on. It shouldn't be just like of a fixed size at the compile time. How you should compute the core map size, basically you just like see uh, what is the size of your core map structure, and then you multiply it by the number of pages. So if, as we said, if we have uh, four megabyte of memory, that given 4K pages, we're gonna use that mean we're gonna have 1,000 pages, which means 1,000 uh, core map entries. Uh, so you identify the size of each of these uh, core map entries, and then you multiply it by 1,000, you'll get the core map size, and then you can allocate it manually. Uh, how should you allocate manually? If you go through the RAM.c, you will see um, all these first uh, physical address pointer and last physical address pointer. How does the uh, uh, core, basically, so as we said, the dumb VM steals memory. So we don't want that if you do not initialize your core map. And the, so and once we call RAM bootstrap up until VM bootstrap, if you put your core map initialization in the VM bootstrap, that's what we don't want because the dumb VM will basically steal all that memory 
while it is initializing all the data structures used uh, in these bootstraps. But um, later on, when you want to really uh, allocate memory for your core map, you're going to do it the same way dump VM do it, which is you're going to, again, steal memory, but it is not a stolen memory because you have a track of this memory. So you're going to just like adjust the first address and make it point to the point where the core map ends. And from the first physical address to that last physical address, this is the free memory that you're going to manage through the core map. What information do we need to keep in uh, core map? We said that you need to keep the page state. For now, those, you only need the states of uh, free or used. Later on, when we go into the swapping, you need to know, uh, you need, for example, mark the kernel pages as fixed. That means you should not swap them out. And the, the free pages, are, those are the ones that you need to just like having other states like dirty or clean. Uh, but for now, up until the second checkpoint, so you can use just like free or used because there is no swapping and you do need synchronization for your core map. Uh, we've also uh, discussed the, um, how MIPS MMU works or how the physical address uh, space versus the physical memory. So we've mentioned that for the physical address space, we have three or four regions. Uh, defines first we have the KU seg, which is the user segment. We have the kernel segment zero, kernel segment one, and kernel segment two. We know that the uh, user segment is TLD mapped and uh, cached. We also know that the kernel segment zero is a kernel memory that is cached and it, it is direct mapped, so there is no TLD uh, involved here. Uh, and to translate, basically, you just need to subtract the OX80 million from the given virtual address. While for KSEG1, is again, the same. It's a kernel memory that is directly mapped, but it is uncached. Why? Because it is a read-only memory. KSEG2, this is not used, but it is TLD mapped, uh, not used in OS161, but it is a TLD mapped and uh, cached. So what you're really concerned with is KSEG0, kernel segment 0. You don't really need to worry about kernel segment 1 and 2. Uh, the last thing we presented is uh, after presenting this picture, we know that why we shouldn't swap, uh, swap out uh, kernel pages, because there is no TLB. That means we cannot keep track of these pages. If we swap them out, there is no way for us to know that uh, where do they exist. And why allocate pages has to allocate n contiguous physical pages. It's basically this function is called by the kernel. Again, there is no TLB involved or TLB fault. Uh, so uh, this is why the contiguous kernel virtual addresses has to just like map to physical uh, addresses. So in the user uh, segment, since you have a TLB, that means, so for the user segment, when we allocate pages, it's going to be contiguous in the, ver in the address space. But for the physical memory, it could be just like uh, sparse or just like uh, allocated in different regions in the physical memory. Why is that? Because we can keep track of them through the DLB. But with kernel pages, since there is no TLB, then we cannot keep track of them. The, and that means whatever contiguous virtual pages that we allocate for the kernel, it has to be contiguous on the physical page. Otherwise, we, don't know, we, d we really don't know where each page is located in the physical memory. So we only get the starting address, and we know the size, and things will go on. So this is what we've discussed last time. Any questions on core map? OK. So Today, we're going to discuss the page table and user address space and TLB management uh, and fault, how to ha handle the uh, TLB fault and VM fault. So currently, we, are, we should be, everybody should be implementing the uh, second part, which is uh, address space and TLB management, the user paging. And our next uh, deadline is going to be the Friday uh, after this one, April, April 22nd. 
So next week, uh, most probably going to be our last recitation, uh, but I'll confirm that through the discourse. So as an introduction to the page table, so let's just start by step by step to understand what really page table is. So we know that every page is 4K, and we also now uh, know that every virtual address is 32-bit. So how should the translation happen? Basically, for the virtual address, we need to divide the virtual address into several parts. Uh, one part going to be the virtual page number. This is the VPN, what we call a VPN. And the, remain, the remainder is the offset into that page. Uh, also, we should know that every virtual page should map to physical page. And all addresses within a single physical page should map to the uh, same physical page. So, sorry, every all address in the same virtual pages should map to the same uh, addresses and or in the same physical page. So, if we, how should we divide the virtual uh, address? We know it is 32 bits, so we're going to use the. Uh, top 20 bits as the VPN and the low uh, or bottom uh, 12 bits as the, uh, as the offset. So we're going to use the VPN to just like translate and get the, uh, the physical page number. Once we get that, we can add the offset to it and we'll get the physical address. So now, what is a page table? Page table is a data structure that quickly maps a physical page number into page table entry. What is a page table entry? Page table entry is just like a structure, keeping track of all the virtual pages. So you can think of virtual page, ta uh, virtu uh, sorry, page table entry as an equivalent to a core map. Core map handles the uh, physical page, uh, physical pages, while the page table entry, the PTE, handles the virtual pages. So, since it is equivalent to the core map, that means or a co or core map entry. Uh, so, page table is equivalent to a core map. Page table entry is equivalent to core map entry. Uh, that means uh, so since the core map entry has all information uh, that tracks uh, all information about the physical pages, that means our page table entry has sh should also have information for tracking the information about the virtual pages. So every process should have its own page table, and there is only one page table per process. Why? Because the virtual address could be translated differently for each process. Uh, and how should we compare page tables? So page table, as I said, equivalent to core map. It is also equivalent to similar data structures that we've gone through, which is file table. So file table maps file descriptor into file handle. While, for example, process table also maps a PID into process structure. The same thing goes with page table. Page table maps virtual page number into page table entry, which is, again, kind of structure. So what's the requirement for a page table? So this data structure. What should its functionality be? So when I give that page table an address and an operation, it should tell me whether this address is valid or not, uh, or if the operation on this address is valid or not. And then it will uh, retrieve. It should retrieve. If, if it's valid, then it should retrieve the physical address for that virtual address. Any question on the? page table. So page table entry. Page table entry, as we said, is a single entry storing information about the virtual pages. Um, what information do we need to maintain in a page table entry? So this is depending on your data structure that you're using for your page table. For example, if you're using flat table uh, or flat page table, then you don't need a virtual page number inside your PTE. Why? Because the virtual page number should be the index into that uh, uh, flat page table. While if you use list for uh, your uh, uh, page table, then you do need to maintain the virtual page number. Because whenever you want to just like 
uh, retrieve a page table entry, you should go through the whole list and compare the virtual page number with the one that you have. Uh, so if it's a list, you do need to maintain the uh, virtual page number in your uh, PTE structure. You also need to maintain physical page number or location on disk. So the physical page number is nothing but, so since pages 4K aligned, that means the physical page number is also the physical base for, uh, or the starting address of a page. Uh, and once you retrieve that, you need to add the offset, you get the address inside that page. So this is, uh, so physical page, it could be a physical page number or a location on disk for the uh, second entry that you need into the PTE structure, yes? It's always going to be one page, right? So yeah, it's going to be one page, but the physical page number is equivalent to the physical page base, which is the starting address of the page. And once you retrieve that, you add the offset to it, and you'll get to your address, yes. Um, the same thing goes with the virtual page number. So again, this is uh, the base of the virtual page. Uh, it's not just like a regular virtual address. You also need to maintain the permission, which whether that page, uh, the permission of this page is read, write, execute. You need to maintain the state of this page. So here is a lot of questions pops up because um, this year we are requiring on-demand paging, which means that whenever you define a region, I'm going to go through it more uh, in more details, but whenever you define a region, you should not allocate the whole physical pages for that region. Uh, you should allocate only the virtual pages for it, but you shouldn't allocate the physical. Whenever the VM fault happens, the allocation should happen at the same time. Uh, and that's going to save a lot of memory. And uh, this is what we call on-demand allocation. Sorry, it's not on-demand paging. The more correct uh, word should be on-demand allocation. Um, so that mean uh, what you need to just like maintain in the state is first of all um, is that page uh, so what are, so is that page valid so what that means if the page is valid uh, it, it has a physical page entry uh, I just forgot the Okay, I'm gonna. Do you know the uh, states of the pages? I just forgot them. Just like it got confused. No, no, no. It's I think uh, is the page located. So, oh yeah, sorry. I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I got it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Because with on-demand allocation, I get confused. So there are two states that you need to maintain. First of all, is that page in memory or on disk? This is the first one. So you should know the state should maintain this, whether the page is uh, on memory or on the disk. And also, it should maintain that uh, if the virtual page is allocated, is it valid or not? That means, does that page has a physical page or not allocated for it or not? So this is the state. Uh, the reference, basically, this is what you need uh, to later on extend for the third checkpoint, which is the swapping, uh, depending on how you need to handle the pages and uh, page evictions and stuff like this. So for example, the reference will tell you, uh, has the page been read or written to recently or not? And this is how you should decide whether to swap out a page or not. But for now, what you need to really be concerned with is the four, uh, the virtual page number, physical page number, and permissions, and the state. Uh, but keep in mind that you're going to extend your structure or the page table entry later on. Uh, so let's go through any questions on the page table entry. Yes? Do we need permissions for check Oh, so I think so. Yes, you do need permissions. Uh, just don't try to implement based on the checkpoints, because uh, that's not. No, but like if it's only needed in swapping, then I can extend it later. 
Yeah, but thanks, thanks. If, if I were you before, I, I would prefer just like implementing this okay. because later on you don't want to just like uh, don't implement it and you run the test, doesn't go through, and then you just like you have two days left and you're still not doing it. So it could have some dependencies or stuff like this. So. Uh, any other questions on the page table entry? Sorry. Okay. No, no, no. So that, that's different. So page being in memory, that means you have the page in memory. But if you don't have the page in memory, a page fault would happen. That means the page is allocated, but it's on disk. The, the valid thing is, uh, so let's say you, once you allocate a region, or you define a region, and then you load the region. So previously, dump VM will just like, if I just like allocate the data region, I will al also allocate all the physical pages for it. Yeah. So just like once you allocate the virtual pages, you allocate the, uh, the physical pages at the same time. But what we're requiring this time is on-demand allocation, which means when I define a region, uh, then you only define it in the or allocate it in the virtual uh, uh, part, but you do not allocate the physical part for it. Why is this? For example, uh, let's say. In your code, you have an array that is really big and that your memory couldn't handle. Or let's say you define a, an array that the user doesn't use throughout the, uh, uh, the program. So that means you're allocating or wasting memory. Why should I allocate pages, physical pages, for that array that has never been used? So I'm just going to define that region. Whenever a hit happens on that array, then I'm going to, a VM fault will, be, will happen, and then I'm going to allocate the physical part for it. Okay. Yes? I think the problem with dumb VM was like, it always used to assume that only has two segments. Yeah, well, this is one of the problems. Yeah, yeah and segment, yeah. yeah. You cannot, uh, you don't have a variable number yeah. of segments. And this is what you need to implement this time. Uh, so, any other questions? Okay. So let's go through the page table designs. So you have several options for your page table. Uh, one of the options you shouldn't use because you're going to run out of memory, uh, which is flat page table. Flat page table, basically, you allocate an array that holds all the PTEs for each process. Uh, and that means, uh, so you have the virtual address, which is 32-bit. Uh, we're going to just like um, dedicate the 20, as we said, the top 20 bits for the virtual page number. That means you're going to have 2 to the power of 20 uh, pay virtual pages. Uh, and that what means, if you compute 2 to the power of 20, means 1,048 pages. So that means if you use a page table, a flat page table, then even though you're not going to use all these pages, but you're going to allocate memory for that. And for, in OS161, you're going to run out of memory. So uh, you shouldn't use the flat page table. Uh, and in flat page table, as we said, the VPN going to be uh, the index into the array. That means in your uh, page table entry, you shouldn't define a VPN. This is just I'm giving. I know you shouldn't use this, but I'm just giving you uh, information so we can compare them. Uh, and uh, since an, it's an array and the VPN is an index into that array, then we can retrieve in uh, big O1 or constant time, we can retrieve the page table entry. Um, and as we said, that most of the entries could be unused in the flat page table. The other option is uh, using a linked list for the page table. Uh, so that means you're going to define uh, every page table whenever you need it. Uh, and that means you're going to have exactly the number of pages that you're using. You're not wasting memory. Uh, but the problem with the linked list page table is just like whenever you want to retrieve a PTE, you need to go through the whole list. Uh, and that means a big O N uh, time uh, searching for uh, each time you want to just like retrieve a PTE. Uh, but at the same time, all entries are used in the uh, linked list. Yes? Does that time compare to the manual with OS 161? Sorry? Does that time compare to the manual with OS 161? I didn't understand. No, it takes a lot of time, right? 
Sorry? It takes all 10 time Yes. So does that matter with OS 151? So that's what I'm, I was going, going to say. It doesn't matter. Okay. You can use it. So the easiest way to implement a base table is going with uh, linked link list. Uh, while you also have the more advanced one that is, you could use it uh, later on maybe. Uh, depends. Some students, uh, I talked to, to some students that uh, did four level, not even two level. So I'm going to explain the two level. If I have four level, if I have then there won't be a difference. Yeah, that, it's going to be a difference because, because it's, it's still it's a constant time uh, retrieve. So it's four level, that means four, all, big O of four. So that's yeah, so constant time. Would not be like that large. Yeah, so the. Uh, in terms of space, the linked list is going to do better. But in terms of time, retrieving, it's going to do worse than the page table, okay. uh, the two-level page table. So let's say you have 100 entries, right? OK. Even with OFN or OF1, it does not matter, right? No, for OS161, no. For OS161, yeah, so uh, linked list is totally fine, recommended if you really don't want to get into too much yeah. complications. Uh, yes, just do what you're going to save time. Maybe for me, I would just like, if you ask me what should I choose, I would go with list for now. Once I'm done, maybe I'm going to, I want to just like consider improving the performance of my kernel by implementing the two level page table. But yeah, for now, since you have two weeks, uh, if you prefer, just go with the linked list and it's much easier. So we have another uh, third implementation for the uh, page table, which is a tree-like uh, uh, page table. So we're going to discuss the two-level page table, while some people would do more, just like multiple levels. Uh, so this means you're going to build a tree-like data structure mapping VPN to the PTE. So what, what happens, let's con consider the two-level page table. Then that means. As I said, the virtual address is 32-bit. We're gonna we did, divided it into 20 bits for the VPN, while uh, 12 bits for the offset. Then we're gonna div again divide that 20 bits into 10 bits and 10 bits, uh, and each one of them, uh, each 10 bits, gonna just like point to uh, each level. So, since we have two level page tables, the first, the top, or the first. Uh, 10 uh, bits going to point to our first level uh, page table. And then the next uh, 10 bits going to point to the uh, 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 second level page table. So what does that mean? That means, so I'm going to explain how the implementation goes for this. So this is how the two level uh, page table should look like. So as you can see here, we have the virtual address, so the first uh, 10 bits, we call it directory. Second 10 bits is going to be the table. The third 12 bits is going to be the offset. I'm going to explain why directory and table. So this first level page table, you need to allocate it. So this has to be allocated. And since it is 10 bits, that mean 2 to the power of 10. That means 1,024 entries for that table. That's what I need to allocate at the beginning. So whenever I'm going to just like for each entry into this uh, page table, uh, so this is going to be just like an array of pointers pointing to another level of page tables. So for each entry that points to another level of page table, it only will point to the base of that uh, page table. And then from the second 10 bits, we're going to get the index. So for example, if this 10 bits points to this entry, then this entry should have a pointer to the second level page table, which is the base. Uh, it should be the base physical uh, or virtual address of that set, uh, second page table of, or the base of that uh, uh, page table. And then uh, using the second 10 bits and the virtual address, we can, uh, we can allocate or uh, know which index into that table should we uh, retrieve. So, and since we have two level page tables, so we're going to keep the uh, page table entry structure at the leaves because it looks like three. That means the first level page table should be array of pointer, while the second level page table should be array of structures. 
of PTE structures. And here where you should have all this information about the virtual page, which is uh, you should have the physical page uh, uh, number and permissions, state, and everything else. So once we retrieve the physical page number, that will point to the base of the physical page and the physical memory. That means the, the beginning of the physical page. How we retrieve the address that we want in that physical page is by adding the physical page number with the uh, offset, which is the 12 bits in the virtual address. And we'll get into the address, the physical, we'll get the physical address of that page, or of that virtual address. So this is how the uh, two-level page table uh, works. So what are we saving by using two-level page tables? What we're saving is basically, so this page table, the first level page table, we do need, as I said, we do need to allocate it. So that's fine. Uh, but uh, for any other uh, pages, so if the page is used, at that point, we're going to allocate another page table for that entry. If it's not used, uh, we're not going to allocate uh, uh, a page table for that entry. That means we're going to save a lot of memory. So we're going to allocate the second level only if the entry in the first page, uh, in the first level uh, page table is used. Otherwise, we shouldn't allocate uh, the second level page table. So whenever a VM fault happens on this, you're going to allocate the second level of, uh, uh, virtual base, uh, uh, the second level uh, page table, and then uh, you need to, using the, sec uh, the second 10 bits uh, in the virtual address, you need to allocate that index in that array and then let it point to the physical page. So this is how the two level uh, page table should work. Uh, so as we said, each page table is 2 to the power of 10. Uh, and if we multiply it with four bytes, because it's holding addresses or pointers, then uh, we're going to get a 4K, which is still saving a lot of space. And retrieving going to be in constant time. Uh, so constant number of lookups going to happen uh, per translation. Um, yeah, so space usage depends on the sparsity of address space, but better than flat page table and worse uh, than uh, linked list. So this is all about the page table and uh, page table entry. Any questions? OK. So let's go to the user address space. Uh, so we should be familiar with this user uh, address space basically have diff several regions. Uh, we have code, we have data, heap, stack. We could have more regions uh, that we could just like load from the ELF file. Um, so the code and data, the heap should come somewhere. Uh, uh, so as we know that the heap should grow upward while stack should grow uh, downward. And uh, uh, where should the heap be is Basically, uh, you should uh, keep in mind that the heap should be after all of these regions. Uh, why? Because why? Because if we allocate the heap somewhere, let's say between code and data, they will hit each other. Since the code and data are fixed regions, uh, but the heap and stack are not fixed regions, the size could change. Uh, so we know uh, the stack where should it be located. For the heap, we need to just like you need to make the calculations by just like figuring out where's the last uh, region that you defined, and then you define the heap over that. Yes. So you, you should make sure that you implement the heap variable after loading the ELF file, right? During uh, or after? Yes. You still yeah so after you because you need to just like yeah you need to load all the regions. Yeah. And then you can okay. initialize the heap, yes. But you still need to call uh, as defined region for the heap because uh, you still need to set permissions and all of this stuff. So uh, sh it should be, uh, it should call the as defined.
Address space structure, so it is defined in uh, address space.h, the header file. What information do we need to keep in the address space structure? So first of all, you need to keep information regarding the regions. So where does each region start? What is the size of each region? What are the permission of each region? Whether it's read only, write only, or read write, or execute, sorry. Uh, for the stack and heap region, so these are special regions. Why? Because the size is not fixed, may change. So you need to just like handle those after you load all the regions information from the alpha. file. Uh, and also you need to keep a page table pointer. So this is where you keep the, so if you see here, there is a pointer which is a page table base. You need to keep that pointer into your address space structure. And this should be your uh, page table pointer. Uh, so through the physical address, you can just like using that pointer and uh, the physical page number or sorry, virtual page number, you could allocate which index you need into that uh, page table. Or the f if you did it into just like uh, two, if you used the two level page table as your data structure. So uh, for address space interfaces, so we've gone through the interfaces several times, but these are the ones that are important. So region setup. How should we set up regions using the, the as defined? So if you remember in the last uh, last station or the one before we went through the load elf uh, uh, dot C. So the load elf basically, first of all, it will call, let's go through it. Okay, so if you can see here in the load elf function, uh, first we're gonna loop through the regions go through the list of segments and set up the address space. So here we're gonna go through the regions, read the regions from the ELF file, and then um, call as defined region. So what will, what will that read give us is basically uh, at what address should that uh, region start? What is the size of the address? So this is the address where the region should start. This is the size of the region, and these are all the flags which are set for uh, every region. So for data, heap, stack, we know that it's all uh, read-write, but for the, the only difference gonna be with the code region, which should be only read-only. It shouldn't be write. Um, so this is the as defined that you need to uh, implement. So please remember that now that your VM should replace it with the dump VM. That means after you implement all the address space interfaces, if you run, if you're done with the assignment two, then if you retest your assignment two using your VM, it should pass. Uh, you shouldn't get errors. So that means you need to uh, re-implement all these uh, functions or interfaces either re-implement or really implementing them because some of them are just like do nothing in the dump VM. Uh, so we're gonna call the as defined region to set up the region and then uh, to load the region, uh, we're gonna use as a prepare load, as complete load. Why, what are, the, what are important about these uh, functions? So for the code, uh, code region, when you define the code region, you're gonna set the permission as read only. That means later on, if you wanna load the content from the oil file, you're gonna need to write into that segment. But since you set it as a read only, then you're gonna get a VM fault. So what are, so these two functions solve the problem for you, which is, and these two functions or as we said previously that all the AS function are only called by the kernel. The user has no access to these functions. So whenever as a prepare load is called, that means you need to reset all your permissions for all the regions as uh, writable. So that means you can write into these pages. You should also not only overwrite, but also you need to keep a backup of what was the permission before you make the permission as write. So once you call as complete load, you need to just like restore the permission to what it was previously. 
So this is why these two functions are important and what they should do. Yes? Where is this called in kernel? Load of. Um, so like this is the only after, place that. After defining the segments or before? No. Be, so after you define the segment, so, uh, so yeah, after we as define region, yeah. as you can see, now the next step is as load. And what will happen next? Now actually load each segment. So it will keep loading using the load segment. Once I'm done loading, so it's a for loop. That means it will load all the content for every region. Once I'm done, then I'm going to call as complete. That means you're going to restore the permissions to what it was before. So this is the only place where it's called, right? I think so, yes. So. Uh, so yeah, you need to uh, restore the permissions to what it was, and uh, this is why we use uh, uh, as a prepare load and as complete load. And so now you should know what you should uh, have into these two functions. The last function, which is as activate. So whenever a process is using a CPU, then uh, uh, the, C the TLB gonna have the virtual uh, translation for that process from so it's going to have translation for that process virtual address to physical addresses so what does as activate do is basically it should uh, just like clear the tlb for you so you could do it some other way just like if you want a more advanced way uh, of doing it is just like you can keep just like a backup if you want of what was the tlb entry because if you just only clear the TLB, that means next time that process, a context works happen, and that context comes back to the, pro, to the CPU, then all the VM faults going to happen for all entries. So the basic way is just like clear the TLB. You want a more advanced way, just like try to have a backup or think of an algorithm for just like how should I manage this, uh, the TLB and make the performance of the uh, process uh, better. So this is what the as activate uh, should do. Basically handles the context switching by clearing the TLB. Now, any questions on the address space? OK. So the last thing we have is uh, the TLB, which is translation like a side buffer. So this is a cache that is used by the hardware, which is the MMU, which is part of the CPU. Uh, so it has. We do have only 64 entry per core, and each entry is 64 bit size. So this is how it should look, which is the first 32 bit. So the f we have two 32 bits. The first one, uh, the first 20 bits, uh, is the virtual page number, and uh, the remaining 12 bits are un unused. The second 32 bits basically is the translation of that virtual page, which is the physical page number. And we have uh, some unused uh, bits, while we have three uh, flags here. First, The first one is no cache. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, the second one is TLB low dirty. And that doesn't have the meaning of dirty, which is just like as we have it in the, for the swapping. What dirty means, just like is this page uh, writable or not. So if the, that flag is 0, that means this page is read only. While if it's uh, 1, that means it is uh, also writable, read write. Uh, the valid is basically will tell you if that entry is valid or not, uh, or if this page is valid or not. Um, um, so yes. that entry, is that, is that equivalent to that other flag? Or like, um, if it's been allocated? Page or not? No, it tells you if uh, so. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I believe, yes, uh, it should tell you. Uh, but I need to I need to double check this. Uh, yeah, if it's, it's really the same as the one. Yeah, so the valid that I told you, you need to have it uh, in the state of the, just like when you define your page table entry, you have that state. You should have the valid, which means if you have the page table allocated, uh, or sorry, if you have the physical page allocated, that is equivalent to your virtual page. 
but that one I need to check if that one is also uh, the same as the one that uh, we have in the page table entry. Uh, so you have uh, three types of, uh, okay, we have two minutes left. So we have three types of TLB fault. We have uh, VM fault read and VM fault write, and then VM fault read only. So the read and write will basically tells you, okay, you have an entry, you have the, a TLB entry. Um, oh, sorry, uh, there is no TLB entry for, yes, you, there is no TLB entry for uh, that page if the v, uh, VM fault read and write happens. Uh, but for VM fault read only, so keep the difference in mind that for read VM fault read only, you have the TLB entry in the uh, uh, TLB, but the dirty bit is set to zero. That means you're trying to write into a page that is read only. Uh, so let's just like summarize uh, uh, what should a VM fault uh, basically does uh, or do is Check if the fault address is valid. Uh, so we have all these regions in the address space. So we have a lot of undefined regions here. So this is what we mean if the page, uh, uh, if that page address is valid or not. So if the page address doesn't fall in a defined region, that means the page address uh, is not valid. Uh, then you need to check uh, the page permission. So if the page address is valid, you need to check the permission. So um, am I trying to write into a page that is read only or not, for example. Uh, check if uh, it is page fault. So this is another thing. Uh, the next thing you need to do was ch you need to check if there is a page fault or not. That means if the page is allocated, then is it in memory or on disk? If it's not allocated, then you need to uh, allocate it as needed. So, and once you do all of this, you need to update the TLB entry with the uh, uh, with the with that with these addresses. So, a few points just uh, go through. We have a, a set of functions that is VM uh, or TLB read, TLB write. Uh, you can find them in kern uh, include. Uh, Arc maps, I think arc maps uh, include uh, tlb.h. You have a set of functions that you can use to manage the TLB, which is TLB read, write, prop. Uh, also, um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. So, yes. So this is it. Uh, also for the slides, please. Once I, whenever I uh, post the slides. The slide's gonna, not going to be this, exactly the same. I'm going I'm to update it because these slides, I just made them uh, one, every week. I uh, just, just like on Monday or Tuesday, I start uh, uh, creating these slides. So check them when I post them because it's going to have an updated information or more information. So thanks for coming, and good luck with the second checkpoint. And see you next week.